Transcending history and the world, a tale of souls and swords, eternally retold. On Games of Decades Past! Yeah, I apologize for the hiatus I was taking for the last few months, but uh, to make it up for you, I chose a pretty awesome game that came out in August of 2003, and that is none other than Soul Calibur 2. talking about Soul Calibur 2 proper, allow me to discuss my history with the Souls franchise. Originally it came out for arcades under the title Soul Edge, but later on it was ported to the PlayStation 1 under the name Soul Blade. Long story short, I haven't really played any of those games, so I have no prior attachment to them, because it was only until the Sega Dreamcast came out where I finally got my hands on Soul Calibur, and it's really funny thinking about it that the original Soul Calibur is actually a sequel, it's not the original game of the franchise, but nevertheless, in my humble opinion, Soul Calibur 1 is one of the best games ever made, let alone fighting games. Just everything from the music, graphics, characters, stages, the content you get to unlock, it's just filled to the brim with passion and effort that I just adore it. It may be my second favorite game for the Dreamcast, which... Honestly, I should probably talk about that console more in depth, probably in the next year when it's gonna celebrate its uh, 25th anniversary, but I digress. The point is, is that I adore the original Soul Calibur, but it will take a while until the sequel to come out. It was released in arcades in 2002, but in, t in terms of the console releases, we didn't get them until 2003. Japan got it first in March. And I was lucky enough that I had a friend of mine who actually had the original Xbox version. So I played Soul Calibur 2 on the Xbox and... Woo boy! That game is so incredibly fun. Just blew my mind. I just adored that game that I wanted to own my own copy. And at the time, I only had a GameCube and a PlayStation 2. And when I looked at both versions, I mean, come on. What version do you think I'm gonna choose between those two? So I went with the GameCube version, and I think it might as well... L let's address the most obvious thing about Soul Calibur 2, at least the console releases, which is the multi-platform exclusive characters. Originally, the PlayStation 2 version had Heiachi as the exclusive character. The plan was to have Cloud from Final Fantasy VII, but that licensing deal failed with Square, so Namco opted to use Heiachi from Tekken, which... I mean, yeah, sure, in Namco, same developer, makes sense, but he actually doesn't really use weapons, so I guess they opted to just use his bracers as his uh, so-called equipment. But he works fine if you play Tekken, which I have a bunch in my childhood. He's still really fun to use, so I don't really have a lot of complaints. The Xbox character is Spawn from Todd McFarlane, and Spawn is very cool. He has this hatchet he gets to use, and... He even gets a cool projectile attack. He's also a great character. I'm bringing up Tom McFarlane, which is really interesting because all of the console versions have one exclusive character called Necrid, which is an original creation by Tom McFarlane. And how he works is that he has this, like, orb that allows him to change between multiple weapons. So it's kind of like a weird amalgamation of different fighting styles. Yeah. He doesn't have the most memorable design, but at least he's interesting to play, and that's the important part. So, since Necrid was included in all versions, might as well have Spawn as, like, the main selling point for the original Xbox. Which leads me, of course, to the GameCube version and freaking Link! I mean, come on! You get to play as Link from The Legend of Zelda in a fighting game, in a top-tier fighting game, mind you, and... It's incredibly fun. Granted, out of the three characters, the exclusive ones, Link is probably the one I'm, like, the worst at. But it doesn't change the fact that they managed to translate a lot of his moves, not just the weapons like the boomerang or the bow and arrow, but even his regular attacks like the upward thrust or the downward thrust you see in uh, Smash Brothers. They managed to 
bring that character in the Soul Calibur universe in a masterful manner, and he's incredibly fun. It kind of really makes the GameCube game unique because later on, Soul Calibur 2 would be ported to PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 under the title, which is a very stupid title, Soil Calibur 2 HD Online, blech. But uh, the important part is that at the very least you get both Heihachi and Spawn in those versions regardless of what console you play, but you don't get Link. So at the very least it does make the GameCube version a little bit more special in that regard, but I'm saying a little bit because I'm going to address something later about those HD versions. Very similarly to the original game, there's also this mode called Weapon Master, which you can choose any character you would like, and you go on this little quest, and each chapter in that quest has a mission you have to accomplish, which is usually beat an opponent, but there's some very unique conditions that spice things up. For example, one time you have to make sure that you don't get blown off by a gust of wind. Sometimes you get poisoned, sometimes you have to do a certain amount of hits within a time limit. There are so many different stipulations and conditions to victory that make that mode very entertaining, and it's also how you unlock most of the stuff in the game, like stages and characters and even weapons. Uh, Soul Calibur 2 puts a lot of emphasis on customizable weapons. Each different selectable character has about 10 different weapons and they all have their own different attributes. There are also some gag weapons. I believe that uh, Link has like a fairy net. <laughs> it, it's it, they usually have goofy sound effects, so they're definitely meant to be like gag weapons that you play just for fun. But the new weapons—that's a cool idea, and they added a lot of content into Soul Calibur 2 that I really appreciated. And what really makes Soul Calibur 2 special is that it's great for both beginners and experts in fighting games. It's really easy to pull off pretty awesome combos. But you have to know exactly how to use the mechanics. For example, I am pretty terrible when it comes to guard impact, which is that deflect move that allows you to keep an enemy stunned for like about a split second, which is very, very useful. Just getting the timing is incredibly tough. But it just goes to show that even though it looks simple on the surface, there's a lot underneath. Overall, there's not really a whole lot to say about Soul Calibur 2 as a game because it's just a fighting game that holds up tremendously 20 years later, which honestly, there are fighting games that came out way after Soul Calibur 2 that aged incredibly poorly in comparison. I was getting footage for this particular video and I just find myself just keep playing over and over because I've had so much fun. Soul Calibur 2 is a great experience, it's just, man, it's a shame that it's just harder to get nowadays and that's kind of what I wanted to address. Regarding that Soul Calibur 2 HD port that I mentioned earlier, it's a great way to experience this game. In fact, it's a monumental improvement over the Xbox 360 port of the original Soul Calibur that was just piss poor. It was only 4x3 without any extra content. It was just very basic and vanilla. And Soul Calibur 2 HD added pretty much everything from the console versions and gave us beautiful... 16x9 display, which looks amazing. Heck, I mean, the Xbox 3 original version also has in 720p, which, look, don't get me wrong, 720p in 2003 is just mind-blowing, but sadly no widescreen. But man, seeing Soul Calibur 2 in widescreen, uh, it's just amazing, but you can't experience it anymore because it got delisted, and that freaking sucks. Justice will prevail! Just kidding! I love Soul Calibur 2, but currently the best way to play it is to dig up one of those old consoles and play it that way. And let's be real, not every person has a PlayStation 2, GameCube, or original Xbox, and now with cases that those discs might rot over time, it's rather unfortunate. But who knows, maybe it's gonna come back, because the one thing I'll definitely say that if it does come back, and if you have just an inkling of an interest in finding games, this is a must play. By far. You know, I'm still glad I own my copy from 20 years ago. Even if it has those weird uh, punctures right there next to Link's head, it's still my copy despite all those blemishes and I'm so happy that I still own this.
Next month is September, which is my birthday month. And there was quite a few interesting games that were released back then. I did Simpsons Entered and Run last decade, so I'm looking forward to trying something else. In the meantime, maybe let me know in the comments what do you think about Soul Calibur? Did you own it growing up? Were you one of those people that owned some of those other versions but were jealous of your friends that had Link on the GameCube? Let me know because I really love reading comments. And until the next time, thank you very much and take care.